Welcome to Not Like This, episode 49. JD, what's your favorite fo- oh, oh, JD's not here. JD's not oh. here. No, I'm here. Uh, oh my God, it's Jim. It's Jim. Welcome back, Jim. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, my uh, my test went really well. I passed all three tests. Perfect score, but I'm back. Back, but I'm it's still bang. on that DSL, but hopefully this time next week, cable, baby. Yeah. Cable, baby. We'll be back to video, baby. Full video stream on, baby. I like that the, the at t it's like this just real bad short-term relationship. You're like, she was available, right. and I was horny. She had a whole... But she gave me all of the things. <laughs> she gave me all the diseases, though. So. Yeah. Well, that'd be good. We could do some video next. I was setting up video just now. Yeah. And Jim was like, pump your, the brakes, bro. Your picture was looking great, too. I was like, wow, that's very crisp. <laughs> HD, clear. Yeah. I, I wear my fucking mm-hmm. Red Cross shirt because I gave some blood. I was leaving because once you give blood once, you're like, I don't need the gimmicks. Just I'm, I'm out of here. And he's like, sir, it's your shirt. And I was like, yeah, all right. I mean... I'm not going to pass my free shirt if you fucking chase me down for it. And I was, it was great because she was like, what size? And I was like, you know what? I think it's large. They didn't have any larges. Had to get the XL. And I was like, damn. Would have loved to have added another large to the closet. God damn it, great. bitch. <laughs> bitch. What are you doing to me, honey? So, Jim, it was it was a weekend of firsts for your boy, Tro. So, Papa Tro. First large shirt. A lot of fir- yeah, first large shirt. I actually snuck into a medium. It, I wouldn't wear it in public, but I'll wear it in the the dressing room. I was just like, yeah, I got it on. I got it on. It's tricky when you're looking for clothes, right? And you're like, well, this fits, but I got things showing. I don't want showing. It's just like I just won't exhale. <laughs> it's never be fine. Um, big weekend of first. Went to the shooting range for the first time. Oh, I didn't know that was your first time ever. First first time ever. Pew, 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 pew. Shooting off my new Taurus G2C 9mm pistol. Very nice little pistol. I like it. Normally goes for around 250 uh, Black Friday sale. Got it for like 170 something. Damn. Pretty good deal. Very, very happy with that. Um, yeah, but, you know, gun's nice, but, you know, my aim, my aim's just a little nicer, I think. My aim was on point. Pew, pew. Yeah, I saw those. Uh, I saw those targets that you posted. Yeah, I mean, I've been watching videos like crazy the last couple months. I, you know, I was as prepared as you could be without ever shooting a gun. I mean, you're gonna learn a lot on, you know, doing it. But you know, I was, I was ready to go, and it was only like seven and ten yards. Like, I'll be, be honest with you, but still, it was, it was nice. It, it was, it was a fun time. Took the old man out there. He, he's got this Smith and Wesson 380. Mm-hmm. Which I like. I, I like my Taurus, but this Smith and Wesson 380. I was just lasering them. I was lasering those fucking moles. That's a pew, pew. <laughs> I saw it. Those targets were hilarious. It's they didn't like have a, any zombie ones. They were. They seemed very Japanese to me. <laughs> what, what, what do Americans like to shoot? Moles. That's fine. Right, and they have like Whatever. little silly faces. Shoot the mole. <laughs> Yeah, so that 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 was fun. This was at a, a local shooting range, which I'll probably go back to quite often. I I like their prices compared to some other uh, joints around here. The staff was friendly, and it was it was just an all around good good time. I didn't I didn't make any faux pas that I uh, that I know of. You know, I think it I think it all went rather smoothly. I'm excited. I'm a shooter. And I shoot those moles, Jim. We need to go. Oh, we'll go. We'll definitely go. I love I love shooting. It's really fun. I always have a blast. I didn't know that was your first time. I, oh, for man. First time. Yeah. That was really good for your first time. Chris did really well on her first time, too. She had a nice, tight group, and then she said, do I have to go anymore? I said, I would like you to, since the, you know we're going to have the gun in the house. She's like, I, but I don't want to. That was one of the reasons I ended up getting rid of it. I was like, I don't want this in the house if she's not going to be comfortable using it, if she has to. Yeah, she's like, how does this work? Rack the what? And what's this button do? Magazine who? Yeah, I could, yeah. What, what, what well, do you not, think? Not from that aspect. Just from like, just, a, just I don't want to shoot anybody. You know? Yeah. Because she would have she would have shot somebody for sure. If that paper silhouette was a person, that person did. 
Ooh, what, was, what, what, what caliber? She this shoot, is a nine millimeter. Pop. Yeah, then because uh, first time shooting, right? So I said, you know what? Let's shoot. Let's shoot your 380. Let's shoot this uh, little baby gun. You know, just busting his balls. I, I'm not one of those people. Like, oh, it's a 22 mm-hmm. or a three. It's like whatever. It's a fucking. It will. It will kill you. <laughs> this gun will kill you. Yes. Uh, but I said, let's start with the small. Let me start the smaller of the two. Um, and it still had, it still had a little more pop than I was still expecting. You know, I was expecting something. Obviously, it had a little more than I was. I was prepared for. I said, okay, this is gonna. All right firm grips and uh mm-hmm. the, the the jumps the jump to the 380 uh 382 the nine wasn't very significant no. I, like i was almost nervous after the 380 i said if that's the 380 my fucking arms my fucking hands gonna fucking fly uh, but that was not the case at all and it was uh, just so just so much fun i like it it's an expensive hobby it is but that's why i don't go you know, the ammunition, you know, I love cleaning it. I've already cleaned my gun twice. That's very uh, soothing and satisfying. Yep, taking it apart, doing your little process. It's very zen, like a zen garden thing. Yeah, it is. And I, I like that. I understand, um, like, the AR-15 people, as far just only as far as, like, the customization goes. Yeah. Because yeah. I was like, oh, my God, you can fucking, this is like Build-A-Bear. <laughs> with a mur- with a murder toy, yeah. This isn't. It's, you can do a lot of cool c- stuff with that. Everyone's got their little preferences and stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, it's it is fun. The first time when you're shooting a gun, it's kind of weird because you don't know what to expect. You know, usually, um, see, the first gun I ever shot was a twenty two. Which there's not a lot to it, but you still don't know what's it going to be like once I pull this trigger and this thing explodes in my hand. Yeah, it's tricky. But but then the jump, like the jump from a 380 to a nine, the bullet is the same size basically. There's just more. The cartridge is longer in a nine millimeter, and there's it's more powder in there. It's it's a higher energy cartridge. But then the jump from like a nine to a 45, it's not that it's not that significant. Really? Not really. Yeah. Because that's one I'm like, yeah, I maybe you know, maybe down the road. I, I, okay, interesting. I thought it would be a forty is worse. Hard. Forty caliber is worse than forty five because it's longer. It, there's more powder. It's a higher energy mm-hmm. round than a forty five, so it's got more snap to it. I I've never had any fun shooting forty caliber because it's expensive. I don't like that. It doesn't <laughs> feel nice. I don't like that. Forty five <clears> is fun. Yeah, I think uh, the nine was fun. 380 is fun, but like nine millimeter, that's very common, you know, caliber ammunition. Yeah, uh, the three, the, the yeah, cheaper, you know, that 380 ammo, it's almost fucking twice as much. I'm like, Jesus, fuck off with that. You're, I mean, your gun's cool, but <laughs> well, yeah. I'm gonna use mine because I can get cheaper. It's about that bulk. Uh, yeah, that's probably the most common, <laughs> one of the most common rounds on the planet. Nine yeah. Millimeter. So we'll definitely have to go. I know uh, our, our friend, listener Dave, is, is amped up. He wants to go, and I'm like, "Yeah, I just, just point point me where the mole's at. Where yeah. the mole's at?" What did have some kick is when Dave and I shot that 50 cal, that Barrett 50 <laughs> cal. That had some kick. <laughs> that had some kick. But I only shot yeah. it once because it was like five dollars a shot. <laughs> One's good. Fucking hell. But geez, Louise, man. It's uh, you're lying down and you're still, it's still pushing you around. Yeah, I'm I'm nervous about because I want to get a probably just like a, a 22 rifle mm-hmm. or something, maybe a little bolt action or something. Because I like, I just like the, I think I would enjoy a bolt action. But you, you know, you put your cheek up to the thing, and I'm like, I don't know about that. That seems I don't like having that against my face. A 22 is your that, your face will be fine. It's well, almost I mean, like shooting either, a pellet gun. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. that much kick, but like just just in general, like if I if I you know I don't know, like if I get my uh, my Mosin or something like that, and I don't know, I don't know. You'll get the hang of it. It'll be. It's like doing squats. It's like doing uh-huh. squats guess- for the first time without without any assistance. You know, you're just like I don't know what this is gonna. It's gonna be hard. Why'd you go with squats? Because I've been doing squats. 
Who the fuck is getting assisted on squats? No, you know, like, oh, you're doing squats on the Smith machine. That's not a squat. Oh, I see. I see. You know, you're doing the leg press machine. That's not a squat. A squat, you're like, I'm putting this weight on my back and then hoping I can go down and back up again. (laughs) I really need that. (laughs) It's the up part that I really need. Yeah. You just got to, it's shooting the rifles are really fun. That's even more expensive. Not a 22. 22 would yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. I'm starting with I'm starting with all the the beginner stuff, and I and I think I'm gonna have a lot of, a lot of fun with that. Even a 22, uh, like a little little Remington rifle. I think you can do some fun customization stuff with that. And uh, I don't know. I think I'm I think I'm I like it. There's really cool trick shot sure. stuff that 20. There's like 22 trick shot competitions that are really awesome. Trick shot. Yeah, you go on YouTube and look for some 22 caliber trick shots. They do some I really will. insane stuff. I will. It's not going to live up to the image that I have in my head, which is uh, Angelina Jolie shooting a gun and wanted in uh, the bullet curves. I don't, you know, I don't, uh, there are, I think shot. there's some ricochet shots, though. Oh, that's it. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Okay, I think well, there's I'll one where a guy, like, shoots a playing card in half in midair or something nutty. Uh, that's That's fun. So the the other first this weekend was I went to my first just as as an audience member my first roller derby show. Ooh, roller what derby. was that? Which which one did you go to? I went to Windy City Rollers and I was watching uh, uh, specifically the Hell's Bells squad because that's a uh, uh, JD's wife Wendy. She's in the the Hell's Bells. What's her so, What's her roller derby name? Uh, Wendy Narling. Oh, I like that. There's the, yeah, it's a good one. There's a lot, there are a lot of good ones. I felt weird. Well, first off, I felt weird because I get there because it's like 5 30 to 9 30. <laughs> and I was like, hey, I won't be here for all of that. 5 30 to 9 30. So I get there at like 5 15. They're like, oh, we're not, it's 5 30. And I was just like, oh, okay. Well, I was, you know, I thought I started at 5 30. So I had to like go back in my car and like drive around <laughs> like an asshole. I was like, this, this sucks. It's at 5 30. Um, like, yeah, I know. I thought it was at 5 30. Like, it is, but it's not 5 30 yet. Like, but, uh, but, okay, I'll be back. 5.30, yeah, 5.30 like, you said? I'll, okay, I'll be back. This is one of those situations where, if, like, if this was down the street, I'd be like, you know what? Fuck you, I'm going home. But I was like, I drove to Lombard. I'm just going to wait it out in my car. Um. So, but, you know, eventually I, I, I get back in. You know, I sneak back in. And I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for our boy, JD. And I'm just like, because I didn't think, I didn't think it all the way through. And I'm like, I'm just like a lone dude. <laughs> at the, yeah, at ladies. The road. Oh, hey. yeah. Hey, bang into each have, other on that rink. You don't have short hair. How are you doing? Um, because there's there's a lot of ladies who don't who are not interested in uh, in me or anything that I have to offer. Um, but it was fun. I, I've never seen a roller derby show. <laughs> Just hurt, just hurt. You don't, you don't have short hair. No. So did JD yeah, ever show up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank God, because I was starting to feel like I didn't even want to take my phone out to check a text, just because I didn't want people to think like he's look at that pretty taking pictures of the fucking roller derby. Like I, I was really in my own head. I was, I was really in there, but uh, eventually JD showed up and uh, explained how this fucking uh, crazy shit works, and we watched it, and it it was it, it's fun. I like it. Wendy didn't play as much as she should have, and uh, which JD would would tell me all about. He would tell me all about it. And oh, I'm sure it, he did. Oh, and I bet yeah. there's some. I bet there's some nice antics there. Yeah. I was, <laughs> go on, JD. Oh, she should. She. Oh, more, oh, more, more play. Play, 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 play. Okay, yeah. I'm trying to watch it though. Uh, no, but it, it's fun. Some of these, some of these, athletic, and they jump over the line. They do some cool tricks. Is it real, it's, or is it a work? Some of it looked like a work. Yeah, I mean, because I've always thought, you know, if you've ever seen the old roller derby TV stuff, I'm like, this is just pro wrestling on roller skates, right? But then well, I'm like, no, it looks like they're really doing stuff, but it just seems worky. It's like they're half in. I'm Like I was telling Jay, I was like, they need to go the whole glow route, you know, just yeah. embrace the theatrics, embrace the personalities. Because there's, there's some wacky, some wacky ladies. And it's like, yeah, it's just do that. 
put you know market that and i don't it's 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 fun i didn't i've always wanted to see it you never really know how like where do i go like how do how to see roller derby it's you know so this opportunity just kind of landed right in the lap they got to do that support jd and his wife and it, it it was fun they didn't have fuck all to eat at the concession stand on keto obviously and it's like it's like well that's just the life i live how much is a I, cup of cheese you i want was a pretzel? no 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 just the cheese yeah i'm looking at the hot dog like i'm even that i don't think i could i could do that it's got a water because those are 25. those are mostly bun at a place like that you know like throwing yeah. away the bun that's half Half what you paid for. Yeah. So check out some roller derby if you if you're ever curious because it is it's a it's fun. It's when you get into it once you learn the rules. It will take about two hours to figure out the rules. And, they, but once you get they it, they skate in a circle and they bump each other and they don't really try to get to the finish line, right? There's there's one. There, each team has a special one where like they have to get through the the clusterfuck and like. Then you know they do a lap, and every time you pass a person, you get a point. And but the and the clusterfuck people are called blockers, and that I don't understand any of that because sometimes they're holding hands like they're going to do a fucking double clothesline, and other times they're just I don't know. It's I I don't know. <laughs> there are some good bumps though. There's some good bumps. Some every now and then somebody would just get kind of decked. Uh, it's not as violent as you think. There's not elbows and back body drops. It's it's relatively safe. But every now and then somebody would get pounced, and I'm like, oh shit. I love it. I love that ultra violence, and that's this is what I have to do. Yeah, I've always assumed it was a work, just because you never see you never see anyone just like dominating. You know, like, oh, this person's just unstoppable. This team's just gonna win it all. It's always like the the rough the rough houses against the the naughty zombie ladies, and then like it's like, oh, it's down to the wire. It's not like a there's never any blowouts or anything. You know, uh, you'll see, you'll see, yeah, yeah, you'll see, <laughs> you'll see them. Yeah. Okay, you'll see some of those. I I, don't know, I, I think really, it's just, it was a simple premise, like the origin of it. Probably it was just like. I love I love skating and I hate other women. How I'll combine those where I can skate and just hip check the shit out of bitches. I think I'll do that. And that's how roller derby was born. Interesting. I have to YouTube some that. of this. Cuz I well, I haven't seen any of it in a long time. I just no. remember seeing it and being like my mom is when she sees wrestling like that's fake. <laughs> like when I got the when I read it UFC two, and she's like, "They're selling wolf tickets. It's phony." I'm like, "No, mom. I'm pretty sure this guy's dead." <laughs> phony baloney. Like, no, mom. Whoa. This is real stuff. Wolf tickets. I love that. I love that. <laughs> this guy's head is bleeding everywhere, and he's not moving anymore. <sighs> So I wanted to talk to you about this last week, but you had to take your little your little spelling test. Yeah. Um, but I saw it, Jim. I saw it. What did you see? I saw a strange land. Oh, he saw it. Strange I, land. I saw a strange land. I uh, Captain Howdy. Captain Howdy, uh, Mason and I we went to the bar because like this was the plan. First was test to see if we have this movie available. We did. Then we said, okay, we got it. Let's go get oh uh, shit faced. It was, then we did that, <laughs> and then we went back. <laughs> it's a good start for Strange Land getting shit faced. And, and we watched it, and it was it was a special special movie. It's like four mini movies in one like you haven't seen it in forever so correct but because like the, the fucking movie doesn't really start until he goes to jail and, and this like, is like yeah, 40 yeah. minutes in and then it's like a, a title fucking card comes up where it's like 14 years later and i'm <laughs> like oh the movie's starting <laughs> Yeah, I guess the way I described it probably made it sound like f five minutes in, he's convicted, he's reformed, he gets out. No, they really milked the shit out of that. And I D. forgot Snyder, all about that, but now that you're saying he, it. He was obsessed and in love 
with the internet that had this this new thing you guys it's called the internet and there are chat rooms and he thought this was the coolest thing in the world they spent so much time on computers and chat and rooms. And little ch- little chat rooms, and Amy Smart's in this. She plays a teenage girl, and I was like, "All right, she's gonna have a big role." She has one scene. She basically plays a teenager to help the undercover cops use teenage lingo, so you know Captain Howdy doesn't get wise. Doesn't get wise. And- <laughs> and the fucking lingo. I don't have any examples, unfortunately. It's not good. It's. Even then, I don't think it would have been accurate in any way. It it, it was just fucking crazy. But by the way, D. Snyder, he's huge. He's a big man. Yes, he's a large, large gentleman. He's a big, lanky motherfucker. Um, Robert England's also in it. And the thing about Robert England, and you know this, whenever Robert England's in a show or movie, you can... I mean, there's not going to be any scenery left because he's going to chew all of it. <laughs> he's just going to eat it. And once it, once again, they're setting him up. Like, I was like, oh, he's going to be like a, a foil to, to Captain Howdy. You know, he's got to have, got to have a rival thing, you know, kind of antagonist for him. Um, he's not in it very long. He wants to go after Captain Howdy. He's like, I think he did it. And I'm a hillbilly bitch. And I'll slap my wife and drink my beer. And he, oh, he's going crazy. And it's so good. Robert England's a fucking joy. But he, you know, Captain Howdy gets him. Cause at that point it's that full well, fine. I'll just do it then. I'll just do. I'll just do it. I'll do the kills. Yeah, that, that's Robert what. Gets it. That's that's where it throws me for a loop. When he's like, "Well, then I am going to be Captain Howdy again." Wait a minute. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't take him much prodding. I love the scene where it's like you know, four years later when the movie begins, forty-five minutes in, <laughs> um, and D. Snyder without makeup, and he he's just fucking Marilyn Manson looking guy on steroids and he's like this meek little guy sitting in a chair and at the the, the crazy house you know packing up his stuff because he's free soon he's getting ready to go and like the the orderly it's like oh, now all right uh, Darren you know you got to be good out there just take your medication and everything will be fine and then I it was weird because this orderly looked at the camera and said I sure hope he takes his medication because if he doesn't it's not gonna be fine <laughs> And I, I was don't like, Whoa. that at all. It was weird. No, no, he, he didn't did have it that way. But the way that they delivered that dialogue was was really uh, – it was just on the nose. And, yeah, there's there's some parts where he doesn't take that medication, you guys. There's there, – D. Snyder was saying some shit with this picture, you know? Yeah, and now he's saying the time is perfect right now. The for internet, s- Tinder. Oh, he would make – he would totally – Make it about Tinder. The time is right. Shit. The iron is hot. 4chan. He's going to be like, it's the hacker 4chan. <laughs> Captain Howdy and 4chan are going to kill a detective's daughter. And that's the whole fucking backbone of this is the cop's daughter goes missing and he thinks it's Captain Howdy. But she's just the, some whore fucking a guy in a motel. <laughs> like, that's it. She's just some whore. Oh my god! Yeah. It's a uh, it's a weird movie, and everyone I've talked to about this, they've seen it. Oh, it, it blows my mind that everyone has seen this goddamn movie. I kn- I didn't know it existed until two weeks ago, but apparently this was this was out there. This was in this was in their world. But Dale, in a true effort of one um one upsmanship, how many have seen it at the theater? That's true. Who's a horrible enough human being to have seen that at the theater? Just me. Just you. Is this the worst movie you've seen? No. Oh, God, no. Let's see. What else? Um, I've seen X-Men Origins Wolverine at the theater. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty bad. Um, I would say Jason X is probably better than this. It's just on a level yeah. because Jason's in it. Yeah. But it's probably on par in terms of, you know, quality of of 
story. I, I don't know. Maybe from, Jason X could have been cool if it was like properly executed. I think the worst movie I've seen in theaters was is probably Medea Halloween too. <laughs> oh yeah, Rob Zombie's <laughs> Halloween I've seen in theaters too. Oh, that's it. There's your winner. God damn, that was bad. There, there I've is. I've seen Man of Steel at the theater, which is it's probably not as bad as Rob Zombie's Halloween. Let's let's be fair. Man of Steel, nothing's that bad. Although it was weird. Man of Steel is just a weird movie to see at the theater. His parents that are just like, fuck these humans. <laughs> His dad just like, take me, tornado. No, it's time. I need to go in the tornado now, son. Yeah. Wolver- X-Men Origins Wolverine, though. I remember sitting in the theater saying, like, turning to the people with me, like, this is the worst movie I've ever seen at the theater. And, but I can't remember if that was before or after Transformers 2. I saw that at the theater. That one was pretty brutal. Uh, Venom, I saw Venom in theaters. That was a real piece of shit. Uh, but it, it had enough good things to really not make it qualify, unfortunately. It's hard. You know, maybe we should do, um, on an upcoming episode, the worst movies we've seen at the theater. That way I can really dig into it and, and really think yeah think about it yeah talk to some people you used to go to the movies like what movies did we see that's a good idea let's do that also in an upcoming episode i would like to do because i've had movie pass and cinema uh, i've seen i've seen a lot of movies i want to do a year-end review the best or my favorite movies of 2018 uh and you know some some of my the worst movies that i've seen like fucking venom well the last movie i've seen is halloween it's gonna be hard for me to yeah. remember how happy other movies made me feel. Yeah. We had Infinity uh, Crusader, Infinity mm-hmm. Stones, Infinity War this year, which I liked. But yeah, God that's on my Halloween. list. I, I have, because uh, I, I actually have the list right in front of me, but I don't want to do it just yet. Well, you know, it's only early December. Um, but Avengers Infinity War, it's not even in my top five but it is in the top 10 i probably um, only seen good movies. five movies this year is my is my problem well on that, and that actually that surprises me that you've seen that many because you don't have the, the the cinema cinema right yeah i've seen uh ant-man and wasp hotel transylvania three. Oh yeah those kids you see the kids in, movies, infinity right? war goosebumps halloween that might be it ah uh, fucking halloween Guess where that is on my list? It's December. Uh, I don't want to guess yet. I want to. I want to hear that. But it's December. It's cold. It's snowy. People. Oh, they're outside. It's frightful. My mm-hmm. lock screen at work is still Michael after he puts his mask on. And uh, last week, I listened to the, the Halloween soundtrack for the new movie. Everyone's yeah. like, "Oh, where? Who do you go for Christmas?" And I'm just listening to that. Fucking The Shape Hunts Allison and just getting rock solid. I, sometimes, like, when I want to be chill, I'll listen to the track titled Grind. Oh, that's a good one. Grind is also a good one. It's it's short. I wish I wish there was, like, an extended version. I could just listen to it on repeat. Um, it's so good. That's The score is so good. Speaking of John Carpenter. Oh. John Carpenter confirms... He is ready to score the next Halloween sequel. What? No, he yeah. doesn't. Yes. He said it. Oh, he's ready. He's ready. Okay. He's down. Oh, okay. No? Okay. I, I didn't know if this was a Dale. I didn't know where that was going to go. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you want from me. Well, sometimes he's, you're just he's, completely he's full of shit for like eight minutes. Yeah. Yeah. But if he's ready, that's good. He's probably, yeah, he's probably really ready. He's probably got some of that back end. He's probably, yeah, he's probably a little, and face it, like, he had to deal with so many shitty sequels. And you know what? It never put a dent in the franchise, or, you know, at least his movie. Yes. Like, it never took any of the, the steam off of, off those properties. But he still had to watch it, and that had to suck, you know? And then you can see why he's so you know, distant from things like whatever, just, just pay me, whatever. But now he finally got, he, it finally happened for him. He got to see a good Halloween movie. <laughs> it, it took 90 years, but he saw it. I can't, 
I can't really compare this to anything in my life, but I can sort of imagine what it must feel like to have made something like Halloween. You're probably best known for that movie. Like, it it really isn't up for debate. Like, the public eye, he's best known for Halloween. So then every time a shitty sequel comes out, there's probably a couple of... at least a couple of B, C list reporters that don't know, you know, that don't have anything better to do that just drop them a line. Like, have you seen it? Uh, did they get your blessing? And you're just like, oh, I got to do this again. You know? Yeah. And this time he's like, no, I'm involved and this is going to be great. And Jamie Lee Curtis, here she is. We're going to hug. Nick Castle's yeah, there. Like, um, we never talked about this despite talking about Halloween just ad nauseum leading up to it. Um, I was a little, like, I was like, oh, it's so cool that John Carpenter's going to score it. But part of me was like, that might not be great. You know, crazy. I mean. Yeah, like maybe his style is, it won't fit this movie. Yeah, because yeah, like he's really, like his new, like he's always been a synth guy. But, you know, like that one album he put out a couple years ago, and I was like, that might not translate to Halloween. He but did, it did. Yeah, he did it right. He, he did. did it per- he did it perfect. Um, I didn't think we'd be talking about Halloween right now. I did. Okay. You mentioned Rob Zombie. I did mention Rob Zombie. Mention Rob Zombie. Why do you do it to me, Jim? I don't know. You know to to make you think of life. good Halloweens. It just ruins. Just ruins. Ruins my day. Um. Because he ruined Halloween. He was also going to ruin another horror franchise. Um, did you hear this story? This is a couple weeks old. King so. Kong. Oh, my God. If they ever <laughs> gave him a budget. I don't wonder if he's playing the blonde that he holds. <laughs> Daddy Trejo as Kong. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Um no, Rob Zombie was remaking The Blob at one point, and early concept art has now surfaced. <laughs> has it really? Is it good? I mean, it, it's just... I'll link it it's to a, the thing. It's just a blob. I mean, it's just like comic book stuff. Like, he's like fantasy booking. Like, I like The Blob. And of course, there's a rock concert thing there. And this is at bloodydisgusting.com. If you ever just Google Bloody Disgusting, Rob Zombie, The Blob, and you'll see all this. Um, I, You know what you don't see, though? No. In any of these pictures, you know, you don't see a blob. Yeah, I see a zombie getting shot and nipples on the nurse. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, yeah, that's I don't... fine. This, yeah, that, this goes back... Uh, for a while and here's some Rob Zombie quotes where you know he says uh, I have a totally different take uh, one that's pretty dark <laughs> you know the blob it was going to happen I was dealing with people uh, I was dealing with people on the movie even though I was on the fence about doing anything that was considered a remake again because I ruined Halloween I really didn't like the idea of that but uh, just as I went down the road further with the producers and the guys that own the property I you know, I did, I ruined Halloween, so I didn't feel good about the situation, and I just walked away from it. Sure my those gut, are his exact words. My gut told me that this was not a good place to be, and that I should I just should just never remake anything ever again. <laughs> uh, so I mean, good good for him for like <laughs> for having that awareness. But really, though, what were his exact words? He didn't say it I was, ruined Halloween. It was all of that except for the Halloween that parts. <laughs> oh, he so didn't he, say he's, he, no he admitted my gut told me not to do this I didn't want to do a remake all that's true just the Halloween bits was bullshit so he's, he was very aware well, they weren't bullshit he just didn't say them they oh, definitely man. were real real in my heart so I mean I'm not a big blob fan but so there was an 80s remake of the blob that I've seen I've not seen that that's a little fun schlocky thing. Yeah, I have not seen. I think that. that's on Prime. That's on Prime. The Blob yeah. remake, and this would be another remake. He's like, oh, there's got to be zombies. A uh, hot blonde with nipples. I don't know who's gonna play her, um, but we'll figure it out. She's gonna. We're gonna. We know, we, you know, this movie needs a little pancake button. You know, I know. I got. I know a lady for that. We can oh, get. Now that's rude. It's got a little pancake butt. 
but he loves you know what he loves her and he loves her little pancake butt so much that he just can't stop putting it in the movies he just loves it like so not every guy likes that that j-lo thick well that's a reference uh who uh mickey minaj but you know i called her mickey minaj. <laughs> i was gonna let it go too some guys like a little pet kick, but he does, and he loves her little tush. It's cute. Now, we've talked about Rob Zombie and what's her name? Sherry Moon Zombie? Yes. I don't know how the fuck I remember that. Um, <laughs> it's not a normal name. No, it's not. I knew Moon because there's a Moon Zappa. One of Frank uh-huh. Zappa's daughter's names is Moon. Maybe his only daughter? I don't know. Anyway, uh. I don't know if we've talked about this before when we've talked about their relationship, but can you imagine if Steven Spielberg had put Kate Capshaw in all of his movies when they were together? That would have been amazing. <laughs> Wouldn't it? <laughs> Even oh, the ones he God. just produced, like she's in Poltergeist and she's in Gremlins and she's in fucking Goonies. Oh, what if she hit instead of um, the love interest in Gremlins, it was her... That'd be great. Instead of Phoebe Cates. Phoebe Cates, and she's doing that fucking monologue. She was like, it was Christmas Eve. <laughs> and the Santa comes out of the river. Just, fuck, that'd be awesome. Yeah. She's in the well, color, luckily, she's in the color, per, she's in the Schindler's List. Oh, no. I, and you know what? He might have, because they weren't together too long, I don't That's think. <laughs> so we could have, oh, we whew, Kawiki that she was in that weird movie you watched on the for the old podcast with uh Dennis Quaid, right? Was it Dreamscape? Yeah, I think it was. I think it was Dreamscape. She's not bad. She's just much. She's just a bit much. You know? It's you you can't have her and short round in the same movie. It's yeah, like they feel that same they feel that same space. That's gonna lie from the viewers. <laughs> so are you looking that up right now? Are you yeah, really doing I'm that? that that's, that's funny. Mm-hmm. Steven Spielberg's banging. He's just like, I'm done with you. So married in 19... 19- She's still married to him. What? They got married in 1991. See? They're motherfucking still together. Rob, do you know what his you net, can, you you know what his net worth her? is? Three point seven billion dollars. I don't know. I mean, that's sure. I don't know if that's good or bad. It seems no, a lot. I that's mean, good. It, like he he's not um he's not George Lucas, right? Like he's not a manager of like an empire like that, you know? Right. So right. so yeah. When I saw that B, I was like, God damn, for oh, like no, a I movie did, director, like God damn. He was the director. Like I, I definitely would have guessed a B. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Fucking Jaws, the ride, all that shit, oh, man. He just, just doesn't have those ridiculous. like back end heavy properties, you know, like licensed heavy properties. That sure would... he does. Does he? Yes. Like what? I don't know. E. Jurassic Park. He, but he doesn't get that money, is what I'm saying. Like he didn't I, create sure, those. Well, you don't know. But yeah, but you don't know I'm, if he's got I'm, George Lucas deal. I'm sure he's got a piece. You know, but it's not like he didn't create that that property. He's hustling. He's on Fiverr, getting that extra cash, trying to get that B. Making eight, eight millimeter two. I think he's crazy. He always comes off as like I'm just a wacky. I'm a, I'm the fun uncle. I'm just I just happen to be good with the, the cinema. But I'm like I think you're a serial killer, Stephen. Maybe. I, and George Lucas is just covering up for him. He's just like Stephen, you you have to stop. <laughs> you hey, have to stop it. Yeah, uh, this uh, part four it can't be about the thuggy cult again. No, let's think about aliens. They're kind of nice. No, what if we uh, rip someone's heart out of their chest again? It just beats and it beats on screen, and then it'll catch on fire. I can't do have, Steven Spielberg. But. You can, you, the live snakes, and you're just, you got real weird with it, Steven, and everyone noticed is all. Is we, everyone noticed. You started slipping. <laughs> and then the Nazi stuff, well, we won't even, we won't even get into that. We don't want to get out of that, Steven. Um, I like this. I like that fiction. 
<laughs> with Steven Spielberg as a serial killer. George Lucas is the fucking straight man. That's great. I wonder if you could get those two crazy. to sign off on a fake movie about them where he is a serial killer. I think you have a 68% chance. Like, what do they have to lose? The, Steven Spielberg would probably find it funny. George Lucas doesn't have a sense of humor, unfortunately. Yeah, that's a good point. Just he you does, can't he's... make. He would have all kinds of like caveats, like you can't make any red tails jokes. <laughs> like this would be shit you couldn't talk about in there. You can't talk about yeah. Howard the Duck. Oh man. Yeah, I kind of felt bad, like when George Lucas did the Disney thing, and there would be these interviews, and he just looked so unhappy. Even like he just got paid all the money in the world, and he was just. I've never seen a man look so fucking defeated. So you know, so but sad. here's what I, because I've heard people talk about that, how you know he he criticized and like, well, if I still had it, this he didn't. It wasn't like he was hurting for money. He didn't have to sell Star Wars. He that obviously, is true. He obviously wanted to do it. That is true. I think he just got tired of it. He's just like, leave me alone. It's not mine anymore. Hey, can you make a new Star? I don't own it. I totally would, but. I they don't it now. It's uh, the nerds. It's 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 all it's our fault. I, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's just how he is. Where if he still has control of it, he feels sort of like compelled to go back to it. And he's probably like, I'm getting too old. That's a lot of work. And then he sold it, and he was just like, Oh no, that was all I had. I want Fuck. It back. Oh Give it back. shit. Fuck. But he's crazy. Spielberg's crazy. He sold it. And he, he said, hey, hey, hey Stephen, can, uh, what, what do you think about maybe another indie? They keep they talk about it, and they say George isn't a writer on it. He's a, he's a producer, but he's not going to be a writer on it. Which, I mean, good luck. He's going to get into there. Oh, hey, oh, you guys are writing. Oh, a little writer's room meeting oh that's cool well let's uh oh hollow earth oh you don't have hollow earth well let me write that down over here <laughs> just uh, some real wacky shit uh, jim speaking of wacky yeah um yeah yeah nicholas cage is a, is a pretty wacky guy and he's uh he i love the master class series Scorsese, uh, Sorkin, all these great writers and directors doing these master classes, and they'll get actors and stuff, and uh-huh. they they yeah. got one of the they got one of the big ones, and it was Nicholas Cage. Yeah, this is uh, this is called a master class, which I find kind of ironic because I see myself as a student, I'm a student of film performance. I always know I can learn something, and that compels me to take the risks. Risks that perhaps people would advise me not to do. Now, these are direct quotes, by the way. Yeah. And I, I just, I love that there's exclamation points in this because you know he was yelling. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not a period, you know, risk that perhaps people would advise me not to do. There's an exclamation point, folks. <laughs> and so he, he's in there just yelling it up. Um, so they talk about a bunch of topics that actors want to, to know about and he kind of goes into detail which you'd want if you're spending like 150 bucks on a master class this is nick cage on uh, not getting too hung up on training i do believe that you're either born with it or you aren't it's a gift you either have this ability to go into that film dimension and be charismatic <laughs> or you don't and it's not something you can really learn it is something you can develop through practice and experience. I only did three months of studying. That's it. That was what I did. Three months. But I learned by watching actors. I learned by working and practicing and having visions and dreams of what I could do in Nouveau Shamanic. <laughs> I would be so pissed off if I was an actor and they're just like, yeah, you can't really learn it. Which is why you're here. <laughs> you paid all this money to go <laughs> learn it, and you can't. You can't. Three months, though. He's probably Just, say, he's probably in the middle of saying that. And I was like, wait a minute. How do I? I got a backpedal. But you can develop it. Develop with master classes. Um, and we've all seen Nick uh, Cage. I almost said Nick Rage. Nick, ooh, that's a good name. Nick Cage. Um, he goes pretty wild in his movies probably take some risks and he really likes to talk about taking risks in the master class 
I wanted to try and see what I could do with film performance and see if I could make it abstract and surrealistic and impressionistic and nouveau shamanic and kind of realize my fantasies growing up, watching movies that my father would play on an old movie projector. He would play these old German expressionist films like Nosferatu and The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari and Fritz Lang's Metropolis. I love Metropolis, and I was Superman, and they would give me nightmares, but they'd stay in my psyche. Uh, he even talks a bit about uh, his family and, and risks that way. Believe it or not, it was my aunt, Talia Shire, who said to me, You know, Nikki, naturalism is a style. And then I became a believer in something I called art synchronicity. <laughs> That's something you do in one art form, like painting or music you could do in another art form, like film performance. So this opened the door for me to take these risks. Whew. Wow. Um, yeah, I could just only imagine this sitting there and you're like, all right, taking risks, fine, <laughs> fine, fair. I can't learn. Oh, there's any favorite films. And here it is. Yeah, he talks about his two favorite films as well. Face Off and Vampire's Kiss. I don't even think I've seen Vampire's Kiss. I haven't. The laboratory, the independent laboratory, where I could do these facial expressions, do that kind of German expressionist Nosferatu behavior. But that was a little indie movie. When I was able to apply it in Face Off, it was able to go out in a big studio film, and somehow it worked. I love that they said, what's your favorite movies? And he said, the ones that I got to be the craziest lunatic fuck and he said, that they allowed me to be. Hold on, let me paint my beard on. <laughs> <laughs> He's got that Carlos Boozer yeah. fucking Sharpie out. Oh, it, no. And also, he, he wasn't just a guest. He was the talent ambassador. He was the oh. visiting talent ambassador. Oh, my. And this is from Vulture.com, which uh, you might want to check out that article just so you can see this fucking picture of Nick Cage and, and this beard. That's yes. crazy. Uh, but he, he talked about a lot because once, once Nick Cage has a, a microphone, there's no stopping him. So this is Nick Cage on uh, choosing collaborators carefully. It's kind of remarkable, really, because I could – very easily have been fired he would come to set and he would say i want you to sing an opera song about cotton balls and i would say excuse me david you want me to do what now <laughs> david is it okay if i have fun when i'm performing and he answered you know nickster it's not only important that you have fun it's necessary because if you're not having fun nickster the audience isn't having fun yeah, fucking Nick Cage and David Lynch. That's that is that is a matchup, right there. Made in heaven. So uh, he also talked about leaving Las Vegas and um, the topic of keeping ripe bananas on set. I'm never gonna win an Oscar anyway. <laughs> so I'd do a couple takes where I'd have no idea where I was gonna go and just be completely hammered on camera. What? Yeah. Yeah, Tony Dingman, uh, he was a drunk and a poet, and he, he came in as my drinking coach for the film. He said, did you know that John Barrymore, when he would have a drink while he was working, he would eat a ripe banana, and you can't smell the alcohol in his breath. Can't smell the alcohol. Good to know. That's fucking insane. Have you ever heard this? No. This eat, eat a ripe banana to cover up your booze breath? No. What? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think everybody listening just said, all right, holidays are coming up. All right, Christmas party. All right, good, good, good. Um, uh, one of the final topics. Oh, there's a couple more. But he, he wanted the students to, to remember why you're there. Naturalism is something that I find is effective, and it's certainly something I feel I can do. And I think you are able to do both. But it's just as important not to get trapped in that, to find ways of exploring and experimenting with other styles, to give your performances effect. And remember that it's a performance. 
I feel bad for anybody that was like, I'm going to take notes. Like, oh, we got Nick Cage. I'm going to take notes because it's just, it's just lunacy. Yeah, it's, he, it's he just goes cra- for it. It's just crazy. Um, last topic here. He, you know, get get to send him out, you know, something to think, to think on. And he, he told him to go for that super eight feeling. I often talk about what I call the super eight feeling. When my father gave my brother and I a tiny little Super 8 movie camera and a little editing machine. And we were kids in the backyard, and we'd make movies. And the joy of telling these little stories about a circus or a superhero. And it was all about the joy of the film itself. It wasn't about money. It wasn't about awards. And that, to me, is the best feeling in the process of filmmaking. When I was making Raising Arizona, I said, you know, I'm getting that Super 8 feeling. And Joel said, oh, that's good. Keep that going. And when I did Mandy, I mentioned the Super 8 feeling to Panos. And he also liked the idea. And I I think that's what it really is. If you go into a movie thinking you're going to get an Oscar from it, or simply because you're going to get tons of money, not that both aren't important. And when you're going about it in the wrong way, it's the joy of filmmaking process itself. That's what stimulates me. Now, joking aside, he's crazy. If I was an actor, um, I'm going into this saying just any nugget I can genuinely walk out with to improve my craft. The literal only thing that you would get from this is watch uh, watch actors watch movies have fun and and you probably already did it cuz it only takes 3 months you've done it right i only studied for 3 months it's the joy of the process that's not out of line though i feel that way with everything you know if you once you get lost on what got you interested in it and the feeling you get from it it could be songwriting or producing or uh, you know playing music live or or any of that stuff if you don't if you're not having fun while you're doing it it sort of defeats the purpose right because we're always told you know what would you do if you didn't have to do any, like if you didn't have to work what would you do that's what you should do for a living so i guess that kind of makes sense in the end you know enjoy the yeah, process it- yeah, sure, definitely, definitely. This could be dog shit, and you could not make a penny, so you should have fun. But when he's just like, we don't do it for the money or awards. We don't do it for the money or the awards. It's almost like he's trying to convince himself. Poor Nick. Yeah, he got that one, though. Didn't he? He got that one paycheck? No, didn't he get something? Didn't he leaving Las Vegas? Or lost in Las... What was it called? Uh, Viva? We no, are Las in Las Vegas. <laughs> oh, look at us teenagers. There ever were. I need to see this Mandy, though. This uh, this horror movie he's in. It's supposed to be pretty wild. I haven't seen it yet. How so, old is it? Five months, six months. Hmm. I know it's on the VODs and stuff like that. Uh, maybe Shudder, if, you, if, you, if you're a Shudder person. He so, won the Academy Award for Best Actor for Leaving Las Vegas. What? Yeah, 1996, Academy Award, Best Actor, Leaving Las Vegas, Nicholas is it, Cage. Is, is it just me, or do I never see him billed as Academy Award leaving Nicholas Cage? It's not just you. Yeah, I don't see that a lot either. It's weird. I, I mean, that's crazy. I bet that drove Leonardo DiCaprio fucking insane leading up to what, his Bear Fucker movie. Oh, <laughs> Because he was always like, oh, Leo can't get one. And meanwhile, Nick Cage is like eating his own shoe. Nicholas Cage. So let's see. Uh, I wonder if, they're, if they'll show me. Now Now I have to know, Dale. I have to know. Has to know. I have to know. 1996 Academy Awards. Is that Titanic? Nope. That that would be the awards. Um, Titanic would have been the 98 Academy Awards. Mm-hmm. Because it came out in, I want to say, 97, right? 
Or or it would have been the 97 awards because it came out late 96. Maybe it's, ba- maybe it's Basketball Diaries. I want him to have beat Leonardo in some fashion. Oh, that's a good point. I bet it was Basketball Gil- Diaries. Gilbert Grape or something. No, Gilbert Grape was early. Okay, so uh, uh, I'm looking this yep. up. Best picture that year. What do you think it was? 96. 96. That's not the Schindler year. Mm-mm. That would have been 90, probably 94 because it came out in 93. 96. Uh, I don't know. I give up. Braveheart. Best Bra- picture what? was Braveheart. Ah, oh, Jesus Best Christ. Best picture we love Mel was Braveheart. Oh, we loved those dad bods then. Best director, Mel Gibson, Braveheart. Uh, okay. I've only half watched Braveheart, but I'm going to have to give it another go, even I mean, though I know it's very historically inaccurate. I mean, I don't remember. I honestly don't remember. Okay, here's what Here's What, what, what else? Was, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Babe, the pig movie. All right, that's not winning. Uh, Il Postino, the postman. Nope. Apollo 13. Okay, Apollo 13 got robbed. Sense and sensibility. Man, Apollo 13 got robbed. Uh, 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 Nicholas Cage won Best Actor. Richard Dreyfus. So that means Tom uh, Tom Hanks. He beat Tom Hanks. No, dude, Tom Hanks wasn't even nominated this year. <laughs> what happened this year? Okay, because here I remember hearing about this too. Because he won in 93 and 94 back to back for Philadelphia and uh League of Their Own. <laughs> Forrest Gump. <laughs> oh. They were they were like eh, we can't. Let's not even nominate him this year. That's not you got to nominate That's him. That's what I heard. So here's who else was nominated. Nicolas Cage won for Leaving Las Vegas. Richard Dreyfus, Mr. Holland's Opus, mm-hmm. Anthony mm-hmm. Hopkins as Nixon, right. Sean Penn in Dead Man Walking. Okay. And Massimo Tro- Trosi for El Postino the Postman? I don't even know what that is. I think I guess Cage he died. It says was... posthumous nomination. Uh, oof. Yeah, I think they made the right choice, to be honest with you. If that's who you're going to nominate, if you're going to nominate the fucking Job Squad, then <laughs> yeah. The job squad. Anthony <laughs> Hopkins. <laughs> okay, I guess. Richard Dreyfuss. Richard Dreyfuss. Uh, they they definitely were on some weird shit that year. They're like, we're changing it up. This guy's just not invited. He's too fucking good. I bet you Meryl Streep was fucking there though. Oh, that bitch. Here's something I never even would have. I don't even remember. Uh, best supporting actor. Kevin Spacey for The Usual Suspects. Uh, James Cromwell for Babe, yeah. Ed Harris, Apollo 13, mm-hmm. Tim Roth and Rob Roy, and Brad Pitt in 12 Monkeys. Interesting. That was just a nomination. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, like, that's, that's I mean, where he's just... fill it out, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Where he just goes, there's 12 monkeys. There's 12 monkeys. And I'm just going to talk like this, and it's crazy. I'm just gonna he nuts. was the hottest star. You have to... It's a t- It's a hype. It's all marketing. He was the hottest fucking thing in in the world at that time. That guy. That Brad Pitt. He he could have said less than that and still gotten that, that nod. Mm. What 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 mm-hmm. a special time. Nineteen ninety six. It definitely Oof. was. Well, we've had fun here today, folks. Yeah. <laughs> this is how I end the shows now. Well <laughs> Well Let's put the shoes on. Yep. I was just thinking of that. <laughs> it's crazy. Sky um, Point, Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Let's plug it up. I'll go first. Just follow me on that gram. Follow me on that gram, Instagram, uh, dot com, at uh, Dale's Wada. Um, check out the Brightburn trailer. I don't know why I'm promoting this studio film, but Brightburn, you too, Jim. It's uh, it's essentially, it's James Gunn produced. Uh, it's essentially Superman, little baby alien, the farmers get him, except for he's, uh, maybe he's not so great. Ooh. Maybe, yeah. Ooh. And yeah, That's, it looks pretty cool. It sounds succulent. It sounds great. Everyone's excited about Brightburn, and yeah, that trailer is good. The end of that trailer, I was, I, I was, eh, all the way through, I was like, I get it, evil Superman sort of thing. But with the second half of that trailer, I, I was like, this kid, 
basically he, he fucking puts on that mask and cape and i was like that's creepy and awesome and i'm i'm on board bright burn check that out and follow me on the gram i will check that out you can come see dad bod dad bod, dad bod big dad bod we are playing friday night december 14th in highland indiana once again uh, same city as last time. This time we're playing at Bone Dry in Highland, Indiana from 9 to 12. Uh, it's going to be insane. We're adding four songs. Never before four heard by Dad Boss. songs. Oh, my God. Yes, and I'm I gonna, do. I'm, I'm going to just pressure Jim into playing songs that he doesn't know all the words to. He's going to go, will you stop? No, I'm going to have an iPad this time. I'm going to be all ready, <laughs> baby. I've I'm going to have my muffler it. in. <laughs> so that's going to do it for episode four. Is that the whole plug? The that's time the whole plug. Yeah, yeah, go okay. follow DadBot okay. on Facebook. Just make sure it's the right one. See, there you go. Um, this was episode 49. Thanks for listening. I'm Sherry Moon Zombie. I was going to be her, you son of a bitch. I'm Richard Dreyfus, <laughs> Mr. Hans Opus. <laughs> <laughs>